Hey, yeah, so Eric Nordquist, I'm an adjunct faculty here at the School of Information. Um, I teach mainly the UX tract classes, so prototyping, human machine interaction, uh, usability, what else do we do? Some design thinking courses. So yeah, mainly the UX track uh, courses here at the School of Information. Could you uh, kind of tell us about yourself, like your background? Yeah, so let's see. Uh, my undergrad is in psychology from Texas State University, just down the road. And my master's degree, I went to New Mexico State. I got that in experimental psychology with a focus on engineering psychology. So my focus there at New Mexico State was on human machine trust and how uh, in a human machine system when humans are interacting with machines um, how much humans uh, trust that system and how to build that trust in certain situations so I was working with MIT at the time on uh, one of their natural language search engines called Start um, so that was some of the work that I had done back then um, after grad school let's see I worked in industry for 15 years uh, doing usability work human factors work uh, user experience work um, so I worked at Dell, worked uh, for Boeing doing contract work for the military, worked at General Motors uh, designing some of the software and screens to run their factories, and what else? At Rackspace I was Director of User Experience managing their internal services uh, for their cloud products. So can you kind of tell us like how you, how you got to the iSchool? Like, yeah, so let's see, at the iSchool I ended up here. I was teaching at Texas State in the evenings for about four years or so. Um, I had known Dr. Bias um, for probably about 15 years whenever I was trying to choose graduate schools. Dr. Bias had just come uh, to the iSchool back then. I think it was called Library Sciences still in those days. He had just joined uh, that school. So whenever I was first looking at grad schools, uh, of course, I reached out to UT and met with Dr. Bias. Um, I ended up going to New Mexico State, like I said, because this program was brand new at the time. And a lot of my colleagues at Dell had already gone to New Mexico State. Um, so I had known Bias. I had a relationship with uh, Dr. Bias for 15 or so years. Um, uh, so that's how I initially kind of got connected with the iSchool over all the years. Uh, we're working at Dell, working at Rackspace. We're always hiring students from the School of Information for our UX jobs. Um, so then I was teaching at Texas State for a couple years, teaching some of their human factors courses. And then uh, I got a call from Dr. Bias uh, asking if I'd be interested in teaching some courses here at the iSchool. So that was about two years ago. Started off just as evening courses and now I'm teaching full load. Um, I also worked uh, with a couple other folks related to the iSchool uh, in industry as well. Can you tell us something about your, like, uh, like what your interests are and like, your research and things like that? Yeah, so like I said, initially started off with kind of human machine trust um, over the years since I'm mainly industry. Over the last 15 years, it's really been applied uh, research. So, you know, actually figuring out um, how user experience fits into product development life cycles. So agile, um, sprints, Kanbans, that kind of a thing. How we can really make sure that UX plays a vital role in the software development process for a lot of the apps that are being done these days, um, as well as hardware as well. Um, so a lot of that work, um, anything related to kind of the human machine system, right? Anytime that there's a, a machine and a human having to interact with one another, we do a lot of research on that. Um, also in the past, I worked at a company called Situational, let's see, SA Technologies. And the SA was for Situational Awareness, where I worked with Dr. Micah Inslee, um, who's real world respected in the Situational Awareness kind of arena. Um, so we've done a lot of work in situational awareness as well, um, predominantly focused on the military at that time. So, so it kind of runs the gamut from kind of human, human machine systems, human machine trust, um, situational awareness, and then also, you know, more related to industry, how to apply UX and applied settings and product development life cycles. If, uh, if a student was going to take your class, like in the future, what would they expect or, like, you know, how, how, how would they study with you? Yeah, so uh, most of the courses, especially prototyping courses, design thinking courses, um, very hands-on, you know, always trying to get students portfolio pieces so that they have stuff whenever they start going into industry trying to apply uh, for jobs and stuff. So most all the courses um, have some type of aspect where we're either doing out in the field doing user research, uh, gathering, you know, requirements for our products, coming in and doing um, low fidelity mock-ups, high fidelity mock-ups, using some of the latest tools like Sketch and Envision. Um, we're also playing around with a lot of prototyping tools like Principal and stuff. So uh, really a lot of applied stuff, but then making sure to, to tie it all back to some of the foundational elements, right? It's one thing to to be able to design an app, it's a totally different thing to be able to explain why you designed a certain way based on psychological principles. So we kind of start with the 
the the foundational uh, I guess base of from a psychology perspective and then try and figure out you know how to take what we've learned um, in academia and uh, use that in applied settings to design apps and software that people can use